two, verses six and seven. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Overflowing with thankfulness. Next two weeks, we're going to look at a message. This message is a two-part. We will complete it next week. I know sometimes for you guys, I uh, I don't split them up. I put them all in one. It makes for a long service. But I've been, uh, I try to do better this time. And, and split it up to two messages. But we're looking at being all thankful. Or, uh, if you will, uh, just being eat up with it, if you will. Eat up with thankfulness. We, uh, we have a, uh, a friend of ours that has a daughter. And when... Uh, you know, when we get together and everybody says, well, uh, let's get everybody to go. Everybody, come on. She would say, all the body. All the body. Come on. All the body. <laughs> so we want to have an all the body experience in thankfulness, in gratitude. We're going to look in, uh, spend most of the time now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Very familiar passage, one that we have looked at before. Very familiar passage around this time of year of being thankful. And it reads, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just pray that you move in an awesome, powerful way this morning. Father God, as we get an attitude of uh, gratitude, of thankfulness, and how we need to be a thankful people, and Father, how it, it changes our lives, and we of all people, that is Christians, your children should be a group that thankfulness uh, overflows, as we read in Colossians. Father, I pray now that I may decrease, that you may increase in Jesus' name, amen. We look at 1 Thessalonians 5.18, and one of the first the first two words says, give thanks. Give thanks. The word give thanks is pretty simplistic, isn't it? That we give we give thanks to people. Um, we give it to those. Boy, I'm having a hard time getting started this morning. Let me back it up, see if I can get going again here. Give Thanks. Liz and I had a challenging week this morning. Not this week. Not a devastating, but just things happened at work, and then things happened at home, and then uh, she needed to go to the dentist, and I had a car problem, so I had, I want to tell you, I had a one-mile jog. I had a one-mile walk, but I thought I was going to pass out three times. But anyway... So it's just been one of those challenging weeks. And have you ever got yourself in a mode where things are not going so well, so you begin to identify with everything that's negative? Oh, well, that's how we get. And uh, this week I went to a, uh, a chiropractor because undoubtedly my movement in my hips is not what it used to be. I said, well, I'm 35 years old and they shouldn't be moving like they used to. So this guy pulls my leg up to, I guess what they call is making an adjustment. You got that right. It was an adjustment. <laughs> I thought he was going to be like Rick Flair. I was waiting for him to pull his shirt off. Because <laughs> he gave me sort of a pal driver on my hip. I don't know exactly what it was. But he could, boom, and then I heard. Pick, pick, pick. And I said, is it supposed to do that? Oh, yes, that's great. I said, well, it hurt. He said, no, that's what it's supposed to do. And we'll do it again. I said, I don't know about that. <laughs> so it's been one of those weeks that necessarily not giving thanks. And I, I tell you what, what it began for me was that it got to where each day getting up, I began to think about what I had to do that day, 
how I wasn't going to be able to accomplish it, how this was coming up, how I need to do that, how I need to do this, and I got total away from any kind of thankfulness there was. And if you're not careful, you get into one of those, what was me? You ever been there? It's hard to get people to join into that party, isn't it? <laughs> oh, what was me? I'd call my mama. She's always in, in the what was me party. But anyway, the first thing here in 1 Thessalonians that Paul says to the church at Thessalonica and to us believers, give thanks. Now, let's look a little closer because he says give thanks in. Give thanks in all circumstances. Now, what is he smoking? Give thanks in all circumstances. Understand it does not say give thanks for all circumstances. Paul says give thanks in all circumstances. That when circumstances are around you that are, uh, that are crazy, if you will, and it's been a tough week, you give thanks in all circumstances. That is, circumstances may be going on around you, some that is, that is tough and hard on you, but you're still giving thanks in those, not for them. I didn't say, Lord, thank you for Ric Flair and him tearing up my hip. You know, but uh, in, in seriousness, when you, when you have issues coming up, it's not, well, I lost my job this week. Lord, I'm giving thanks for losing my job this week. No, it's not that. Lord, I'm giving thanks in that. In spite of that, I'm giving thanks because I am thinking of you. That you are in control. That you are, that you will bring good out of evil. You know, the Bible says God brings good out of all things. And things that are evil, God can turn them good things. Have you ever had that happen to you? Now it doesn't mean that circumstances was a good thing. But God will bring good even in evil circumstances. So to give thanks in things not for things. God God brings good out of our stupid mistakes, doesn't he? <laughs> Let me tell you what happened to me yesterday. Oh, I'm glad y'all are my counselors today. I'll lay down the couch and explain to you. <laughs> Liz, because she's on some medicines for uh, getting ready for this surgery, it, it leaves her uh, dizzy. Uh, so I, I took her to work yesterday, and she had her paycheck, and, and I said, well, honey, let, I'll take it to the bank. I'll take it there. She said, okay. So she signed it. Now, in the meantime of going to where she works, I went by J.C. Penney's. And J.C. Penney's had some shirts that I was interested in getting. Boy, this is thrilling, isn't it, guys? Um, <laughs> now, keep in mind, she gives me $7.83 a week to do whatever I want to. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad of that. And she no longer makes me use gas money out of that, so it's, it's, it's okay. But in the meantime of taking that, check. Undoubtedly I had in my pocket when I pulled my wallet out the check came out. So I drove to the bank to make the deposit and realized that I don't think I had that check. I tell you what one thing that will do for you, you'll get your car clean. <laughs> <laughs> and I pretty near found a whole bag of uh, peanuts and just get it out from underneath my seat. But anyway, <laughs> and then I had to call her and say, I think I've lost your check. Well, where were you at? And, um, you know, you, you sound like a little, uh, I felt like a little kid, you know, when they called their mama. Where were you at? Where did you go? Where was the last place that you remember seeing it? Did you put it in your pocket? And, you know, I couldn't say, why are you being like this? Go, really messed up. Nonetheless, we found that check. But anyway, God bless us. Actually, J.C. Penney found that check, and we checked with them, and they said we got it. But we had some, uh, now, 
I, I know this don't have anything to do with it, but I got to make up for this. Last night, I was coming home with me and Boomer. We were just minding our Boomer business. <laughs> I came in the driveway and there was some there was a deer up in the woods. So I put my headlights on and Boomer goes. Whoop, 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 whoop. So he lets out. I bring Boomer into the house and I said, I, I was pulled up here, turned the headlights on, and Boomer started barking at the deer. She said to me, Did he think it was a dog? <laughs> <laughs> And then I said a little sarcastic, he's right here asking. <laughs> I'm sorry, that I apologize for that. You can be thankful for God because he never listen now, listen. You need to, you need to grasp this. He never stops loving you. No matter if you have not done what you think you need to do, even if you've done some stupid stuff, God never stops loving you. I can always thank Him in that. And He will never leave you. Give thanks in all. It says all things. It is... This also goes on to say, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will. This is God's will. You know, one of the big things that happens to us, I don't care where you're at with your walk across, every once in a while you just say, you know, I just wish I knew what God's will was for my life. And if I knew what God's will was, was what God wanted for me, I would do it. I'm anxious. I want to be a part of what God's doing. If I just, how do you find out God's will? And of course, some of those answers is, you know, you want to make sure you read your Bible and pray and do that on a regular basis. But right here in the Bible, it tells us specifically what God's will is. And that is to be thankful. How's that going to It hasn't gone that good for me this week of being thankful. And I tell you what, I've learned one thing from this week. When you don't stay in a mode of thankfulness, you will begin to slowly get into a mode of depression. Because you begin to see the negative in so many things. And God's working, but you can't see it. So you get frustrated. And, and folks, we will know this. It comes out in our relationships sometimes, doesn't it? Man, you get frustrated and sometimes you just, you know, you jump. And, and you say things you ought not to. But it says it is God's will. And when someone says, God, do you want me to change my job? Lord, do you want me to do this? Lord, how do you want me to move in this area? Father, I just need to hear from you. God is saying, listen, you take care of number one, God's will, it says here, for this is God's will for you. What is God's will? That you give thanks. That you're in a mode of thankfulness in all circumstances. Not for all circumstances, in all circumstances. And I think many times the Lord says, you take care of number one, I'll take care of number two, number three, number four. I'll reveal, I'll reveal that to you. You know what I tell you this week? Most of the week, if somebody would have followed me around, they would have said, listen, and they said, uh, that's a preacher there. <laughs> I don't want to have anything to do with that. Where is this church? Just so I make sure I don't go there. Now I'm getting a little extreme here. It wasn't quite that bad. But still, sometimes we're not a good poster child for Christianity. <coughs> if we're careful, we're never thinking. And you know what the tragedy is? If you've ever had a time in your life and sometimes somebody will say something to you, there's just nothing that will please you. And even 
big tragedy, bigger tragedy. It's when you're in a child of God and other people are saying, there's just nothing to learn that can happen. God says, give thanks. Folks, let me tell you, I read some stuff this week and it says that medically speaking, physically speaking, that if you're in a mode of thankfulness, if you're a thankful person, your health will be much better. One of the ladies that just recently passed away that Liz was talking about this, Lisa's grandmother. I don't know her earlier in her life, but I know later in life she was one of the most thankful persons I've ever met in my life. It did not matter what was going on in her life. She had many medical health issues later in life. She was always thankful. Just amazed. And I always enjoyed being around her because she just lift you up, just build you up. Satan is the one that wants to keep you out of that mode of thankfulness. So God's will is to be thankful. Well, why is it God's will? And we're going to look at four points. There's a couple more, but we'll look at them next week. Why is it God's will for us to be a thankful man? <coughs> Number one, it honors God. When you thank someone for something, you have honored them. And you know, sometimes in a relationship, even with husbands and wives, we don't, the word sometimes gets thrown out, you're not appreciative. They don't thank me for things. You know, sometimes we'll say, well, thank you for the meal, thank you for this, thank you for that. Now that's good, but anytime you are thankful to someone, you have honored them. But here it goes even deeper than this, and this is when it, you become all thankful, or all about it thankful. It's when you're not only thankful for what they are doing, but you're thankful for who they are. God, thank you for allowing me to have this nice car and this nice home. Lord, thank you for uh, allowing me to have this vacation. Thank you, Lord, for uh, my physical well-being. Thank you, Lord, for my finances. Folks, I'm not saying that's wrong. But also, there's a time of saying, and this is when that that thankfulness begins to be deep inside of you, and you become all thankful, if you will. Radically, radical gratitude, you might say. When you say, God, thank you for loving me. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you for your wisdom. Because God, right now, you know, if we're not careful, I just, I just thought this won't cost you a thing. We're, if, if we're not careful, we begin to pray prayers to God saying, God, I already know what needs to be done. I just need to get you on board. So God, this is what I need. I need this, I need this, I need that. And I'm not saying those are necessarily really wrong prayers. I don't know if it's, that's probably too strong a word. Because God wants to know what we, what we need. But one of the great things of being thankful in all things is coming to God and saying, God, I need your wisdom in my life. And God, I'm not going to give you a checklist of what I need you to do. I'm thankful that you're all knowing, that you're all caring, that you love me. Whatever it is that you see best in my life, Lord, I'm going to be thankful for that. That's that deeper thankful. It's me with Liam saying, I'm thankful for the dinner. But it should be, I'm thankful for you. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you what, I enjoy being with my mate. And she does enjoy being with me on occasion. So, you know, uh, <laughs> she won't give me her paycheck anymore. But, that's the, but it, when you're thankful, and when you're thankful.
Number two, it creates fellowship. It builds relationships. If there is someone in your life that you want to get closer to, we got to be careful of saying, well, if they would change this or change that, then we could probably get a little closer. Become a person that gives out some gratitude to them, and I guarantee you they'll be closer. Sometimes we're not careful in any relationship. We just see the bad in somebody else. If you're not careful, you get in that, that mode and you just begin to express all the negativism about someone else. Folks, that's not going to build a relationship. I don't care. i got to make a point. It's about principle here. And you may just principle yourself right out of that relationship. There's times to work on those things. But let me tell you, you want to grow a closer relationship with someone closer in your relationship with God as well. Gratitude does that. And it should be the very essence. It is God's will for us to be a people of thankfulness. You know, one thing I didn't mention when it honors God, I'm also thankful for unanswered prayers. Amen? Amen. Have you ever had some prayers that you think God thank you? Thank you for not feeling that prayer. I remember my stepdad tells a story of my mom, and he's been dead for some time now. I just, I think it was December the 20th. And he had been divorced for some time, and he was praying to God to send uh, the right lady into his life. And there was a lady that he sort of got a little bit involved in, and he just prayed to God that this would be it, and that she would... I don't know if she, he ever asked her to marry him, but th th this would be if there were some issues and some concerns, and and um, and that relationship didn't work out. And then he got a relationship with my mom, and he said, you know what? I am so thankful that God said no here, because he had a great family. So I always remember that when I think of unanswered prayers. Folks are dealing with God, but also in our relationships. We've got to be thankful for one another. We can be too hard on those that we love. This old country western song, You Lost That Love Feeling. <laughs> and it's gone. Gone. <laughs> Sometimes I love the feeling you get lost when someone's only told over and over how they fall short. How they're not doing what you think they should do. We of all people ought to show gratitude to one another and to our Lord. It de develops faith, number three. When times are tough and you are you are thankful in it, not for it, it will develop your faith. It develops trust, and trust develops faith. One of the great joys that I and I know I've mentioned this so many times, and you probably think, oh, don't, don't go there again. <laughs> You're wrong, I'm going there again. Anyway, uh, Folks, what it means for people to give a testimony of what God has done for them. Two weeks from today, we're open for that at this very moment. Somebody says, I need to tell something now, you raise your hand, we'll let you do it. But in two weeks, we're just going to have a little time of allowing people, we're not going to put you on the spot, but allowing people to talk about what they're thankful for. When you share with other people what God has done for you, and I don't know for many of you that I've talking to you in a private way and I would never bring that up without your permission. I just wouldn't do that. But when I think about that, I think, oh man, I know one or two others that need to hear that story. Of 
God's faithfulness. And being thankful for what God has done develops that faith. It develops the trust of what he's done in the past. The trust develops faith. Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 through 19. Now, I heard a pastor say one time that uh, I'm choosing the, this book, Habakkuk, and you ought to thank me for it. So when you get to heaven and Habakkuk comes up to you and says, did you like my book? You can't say, I, I didn't know you had one. So anyway, um, <laughs> chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, things are happening in his life that are not positive. He's not thankful for the circumstances. Watch this. Though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pens and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. But verse 18, in the midst of all that, Habakkuk is, is remaining thankful in it, not for it. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Folks, even when tough times are going on, we continue to thank Him. I will rejoice in the Lord because He is faithful. The last one that gratitude does, it serves others. It becomes a ministry. We're all ministers. You may not be a pastor or a preacher, but we're all ministers. And we've heard of appreciation and depreciation. <laughs> you know, when you leave a car lot and you pay $25,000 for a car, you drive it home, drive it back and say, I've changed your mind, okay, I'll give you $22,000 for it. What do you mean? It was, was $25,000 15 minutes ago. Once you pull it off a lot, it's depreciated. And that's what happens with the car. It means that it loses its value. It's a decrease in value. Appreciation is to raise in value. This week, with Liz's surgery coming up, they gave her prescriptions for about four or five different things. There's supposed to be prescriptions in my life. She gets now, this is not going to cost you anything, she gets, let's count them, one value to start that day. I thought, this thing better not be 25 bucks. If, she give them, if they're giving me one pill, we, I'd probably get on the market for it. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, she got a prescription for these medicines that she needed. The Ministry of Appreciation, folks. Everyone in life needs a, a massive dose of encouragement. And one of the things about being a people of gratitude, a people that are thankful because of what Christ has done for them, it gives you a great ministry to give people a massive dose of encouragement. Sometimes in this world we just don't get much encouragement, do we? But the times that we get pointed out is when it's discouragement of what you've done wrong. And it can happen at a workplace. It can happen at home. And one of the greatest in these steps is maybe certainly maybe the best for today is that you can be a minister of encouragement by your life of gratitude and thankfulness. I encourage you when you go home, when you open up those front doors, look around and see what you got to be thankful for. Chances are it's the very one that you that's coming in that door with you. Look and see all that you've got. And you won't see people's lives change. You won't see people that have negativism and begin to change to a positive way 
then you encourage them. And folks, I tell you what, I believe 99.9% .9 of the time that I've seen it in my life, it has always brought me closer to that individual. Share some encouragement. Be a people of thanksgiving. It is God's will. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your word. God, you're awesome. Lord, we just pray that we can be encouragement to one another. Father, it's true in life that sometimes when it's a long day at work, if we're not careful, we come home and we may take it out on somebody else. We all not do that. Father, may this be a week that we get up each morning, Father, and just say two things that we're thankful for from you. From you. Not what you're doing, but just thankful for who you are, that you love me, that you'll be with me throughout this day, that your mercy is never failing. Oh, Father God, and that Lord, and when I turn my eyes upon you, you're always there. You never leave. Lord, we'll pray, we'll entertain any decisions anyone may have here today. We pray your will be done in Jesus' name.